the biggest problem these days with all of students is they won't start studying until it's too late and what to do about it is the biggest question every student will be thinking about for most of the students the experience of studying for an exam can be captured in one single word which is called as panic other than your 8 hours of sleep you have got 16 hours in a day when you are preparing for an exam that is when you have like holidays to prepare for your exam other than your college days you have 16 hours in a day your mind is completely exhausted and sitting there staring at a scheduled sheet full of gibberish and you will be thinking why why didn't I start earlier this is what all of you might be thinking about when you see such a tremendous amount of portion in front of your eyes so believe it or not there are so many forces which are acting against you that is pulling you away from starting early so let us focus on what are they and how to prevent those things so you are anticipating hard work as humans we all are known as cognitive misers what do you mean by this so we always try to conserve mental resources whenever possible which means especially when facing tasks not viewed as essential to our survival until or unless it is really really important at the neck of the moment we try to obtain that or in other words we can say that we put off studying completely until the last minute because we know that the work is very hard if you try to open anatomy if you try to open pharmacology you'll feel oh my god this is very hard and this require a lot of mental energy this is what the students will think very often when they want to start earlier because it will consume a lot of mental energy and another important thing is until there is a threat of actually failing in the exam and therefore potentially being humiliated publicly and by the parents and by the society and by the friends majority of the students are not in enough emotional pain to motivate themselves to start studying so all these are called as last minute students so now think of the difference between a hundred yard dash and a marathon if you talk about a hundred yard dash that is in the first case you are able to give your maximum effort because you can see the finish line it is very close right and no it will be over soon but what about the marathon like five and a half years of course five years of course the marathon runner is not so lucky because they know that there is a long road ahead filled with pain and exhaustion and subconsciously conserve their effort to ensure that they can make it through all miles only by means of proper dedication so whenever you have your goal which is in front of your eyes you will be motivated completely but the goal is very far for example you will take it easy i have time to study the biggest problem with each and every student is a procrastination and other than this many students have a false sense of security you may think that you are a diligent student sitting there in the lecture listening intently copying down page after page of notes from the professor what he is teaching you might be even following along and raise your hand here and there whenever the professor is asking you the question but there is a big difference between feeling like you understand something and actually being to able to reproduce it on the test what actually you can reproduce on the test then only we can feel that we know something this is what we call it as a passive learning and it's the best way to ensure that you'll spend a lot of time and effort trying to learn a new material without actually being able to retain any of it because many students will complain the same problem they'll say that sir i studied so much but i am not able to remember at the time of the exam why this is happening this is happening because whenever you are studying you are studying for the exam you are not studying for the knowledge you are not studying 
to understand the concept. So how to overcome this problem? The important thing is immediately after you study one particular topic, what you need to do is you have to quiz yourself. That is the best way to assess yourself. Just don't be fooled by your professor overly logical explanations. For example, when I explain something else, everything is in the brain. That's the reason I can explain pretty quickly. Because the professor already knows the material, so it is easy for him to explain it in a way that others find understandable. But the real challenge is whether or not you can do the same. Once you understand the concept, you should be in a position to explain to yourself and reproduce it. If you are wondering if you actually understand something, what you have to do is quiz yourself or better yet explain it to someone or yourself but be warned people tend to stare as Einstein liked to say if you can't explain it simply you don't understand it well enough you can only explain to yourself and to someone else only when you know the material and the concept completely so routinely quizzing is extremely important to know yourself how much you know from what you read. So routinely quizzing yourself, you will get a close of reality of whether you actually know the material or not. Instead of what most students do, assume they know it until the night before the test and when they proceed to freak out because they can't do any of the practice problems when they face in the exam. This is the biggest problem what each and every student is facing these days. That is the reason whenever you study a particular topic, give a specific time to the topic after you clearly understand the topic from all the corner quiz yourself that is what is very very important to know about yourself and what knowledge you have in the topic and another important thing is whenever you are studying like tremendous amount of portions or a syllabus chunk your study time you know that your brain uses a lot of energy that is 20 percent of our resting metabolic rate and there's only so much you can expend per day. To maximize your retention of the new material, you want to take advantage of both active learning and recovery. Because the brain is a beautiful place where it consolidates the new neuronal pathways during sleep, particularly the REM sleep. So the more sleep cycles you interpose between your steady hours, the more likely it is that you will retain the material whatever you have learned and able to whip it out on the testing so this is actually is going to allow you to take advantage of the space to repetition instead of having to constantly review your material to keep in the forefront of your memory you can follow a cycle of ever increasing time intervals between the review sessions which is called the forgetting curve and decreasing the overall amount of the time needed to relearn the material you might have forgotten from the beginning of the preparation when the final exam rolls around. This is what is very, very important for each and every of you to understand. And the most important thing is you can't get motivated or focused. That is the major problem for majority of the students. A lot of the students tend to sit around and wait. Here's the problem. Motivation comes and goes, but the demands of the medical school as well as learning everyday life don't. And if you are relying on your motivation to keep you focused, everything you are doing is going to be in a perpetual state of lateness and last minuteness because there is never enough motivation to go around. So focus on the process with the end in the mind. So why are you in med school? First, try to understand the basic question. Question yourself, why I joined in the medical school? Why do you want a degree or a license to practice? Get clear on exactly what your motivations are. But thinking about the future is not enough. But you should have a proper vision of the future that drives your emotional intensity needs to be linked to your daily activities. Right? So each day I study for like a particular topic which means you are step closer to becoming a doctor and making a difference in people's lives. So what is the one set of activities each day that will virtually guarantee success in your coursework? You should identify that first. 
and what you can do to organize your complete day when you have a free day. Set up incentives, quit things that do not matter to you to virtually guarantee you that you will do one set of activities in a particular day, whatever it may be and whatever may be the motivation may be. So you have to concentrate on all these important points. Then only you can reach the goal, whatever you are planning. So that is the reason don't just procrastinate each and every time. In this competitive world, it is the time now to open your books and start studying. But whenever you start studying, initially it will give you a pain compulsory. It is an emotional pain, right? But once you understand the subject, not only just understanding the subject, just imagine yourself not only understanding, you're also reproducing to yourself and to your fellow mate or your friend. How much confident you will feel? That confidence is really required for you to keep yourself motivated and to do this process constantly each and every day for five years. So there is a rule called as 10,000 horse rule to become mastery in any of the field. For example, if you are studying for approximately for six hours a day, for 365 days, for five hours, almost you are spending more than 10,000 hours to become mastery in your subject. So believe in yourself and start your preparation today and reach your goals as expected.